It was one year ago the world watched in live horror as newspaper cartoonists and their friends were gunned down in their Paris offices and on the streets. With regard to stopping terror, have we really learned anything at all? Senator John McCain shocked many people with his comments about the citizenship of GOP presidential candidate Ted Cruz. He'll join us to clear up any confusion, also hammer away at government waste. Speaking of candidates, Marco Rubio has taken what many believe is a hard roll gamble with his latest campaign commercial, where the name of a certain deity is front and center. And the senator from Florida figures into rise of the silliest political season in memory and a good reason to talk about manly footwear. All right, saddle up, prepare to be enlightened as to what is truly silly and what is not. I'm at Berliner in the hard line for Thursday, January 7th. Goes full gallop right now. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of France as they confront the terrorist threat to their nation. Uh, and uh, even on the days when we uh, remember the, the sad events of a year ago, uh, the French people uh, can know uh, that the American people uh, and the American government uh, is standing right there with them. He very likely could have been just another wannabe, a wingnut who watched the calendar and decided to go out on a blaze of historical glory with no real connection to the global terror group ISIS. One could make a case for that after a Paris attacker was shot dead Thursday, wielding only a butcher's knife, not heavily armed, wearing a phony explosive vest, holding onto a piece of paper with a crudely written claim of responsibility in Arabic, that this action was taken in honor of the terror killers, who one year ago killed 11 people in the offices of the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo. Anyone can say anything, make any claim. And in the end, it's up to the authorities and the people to decide if they will be scared in knee-jerk fashion or understand, as many already do, this is the new normal, one we have to learn from or commit ourselves to a life always being scared. So one year later, what have we truly learned about uncovering and stopping those who seek to do us harm anywhere, anytime? Let's get the insight. Welcome back, former assistant director for the Criminal Investigative Division at the FBI, president of the Law Enforcement Legal Defense Fund, Ron Hosko and the highly decorated former New York City police detective investigator, also president of the CMP Protective and Investigative Group, working with clients around the world, Thomas Ruskin. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for being here. Ron, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you. What I just said to begin things out here tonight, one person, paper on the body, image of a flag, and it turns out that this gentleman, Salah Ali, was born in Morocco, homeless at one point, had a criminal record as a thief, according to France 24. Do we not need to stop ourselves a little bit anymore and just make sure that every time we see something like this happen, we're not knee-jerking, that immediately it's going to be ISIS. Anybody can claim anything at any time. We gotta get smart, don't we, Ron? We do have to get smart, Ed, and uh, that's absolutely true. This, um, this one individual's act may be uh, no less concerning or deadly um, we have this with the active shooters in America where you have people who are, we have a massive mental illness problem in America. Maybe what we saw today in France is, is their manifestation of that. We have to be smart. We have to figure out what pieces fit together and what pieces don't fit into this bigger ISIS puzzle. Tom, let's get to those pieces, because that speaks to me of intelligence. And we've talked about it many times, how whether it's France, whether it's America, mm -hmm. global, whatever, we're terrible at gathering intelligence. Don't we need to do a better job here? Look, we can't rule out the possibility this guy was involved with somebody, but we have to first know who we're dealing with, what we're dealing with, what's coming our way. That's intel, Tom, and we're bad at it right now. We've got to get right. better. That's something we haven't learned. Listen, as someone who flew over to Paris the day after Charlie Hebdo a year ago and was there in the aftermath of it, yes, we have to get a lot better with intelligence. We have to start sharing better with different countries. We have to understand what was behind this guy's attack today. But you go into a police station with a hatchet and you look like you're going to do harm to police officers or law enforcement officers. I don't care if it's homegrown terrorism or a lone nut wolf. 
he was a terrorist in my mind, if, if in the broad definition or the short definition of terrorism. All right, Ron, he, Tom brings up a really good point here. Have we gotten to the stage where, as we're entering this new normal now, that we have to understand, we used to think of terrorists as shadowy figures in the desert somewhere, or people who would come with a bomb in the middle of the night. But we need to understand now that terrorism has been expanded, and it is people like this. This is the new definition of terror, could be just the lone guy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, ISIS has made every opportunity to outsource terror to our country, to other countries around the world. They are, they are seeking that very goal. They don't care about how big of a bang you make as long as you make a bang and claim it in their name. So they can take, take credit for it. And whether this person was able to kill a, a police station full of police and others on the way in, or just draw their attention and claim it in the name of ISIS with a, uh, a marking on himself, it, this is another tiny victory for ISIS. They'll accept that victory and they'll go on to look for bigger ones. Tom, do you agree with that, that this is a victory for ISIS, whether or not they even knew this guy existed, but simply because their flag and their name are out there? I don't know about, I, I, I agree with Ron and I disagree with Ron. And where I disagree with him, I don't know if this was a guy who became radicalized or even heard an ISIS video. All I do know is that around this world, in our civilized societies, we have to be much more aware of these people who could become nuts, who are nuts. And to me, it wouldn't have mattered if he tried to hurt or kill people in the streets of Paris or any other city, or if he tried to get into a police station. The good news here is he was taken down and he was killed before he could do any damage or hurt anyone. Ron, there's a good point. We've already seen the pictures of this guy in the street. The cops got to him, they shot him, they didn't wait. Isn't it fair to say that whether it's France, whether it's New York, Los Angeles, I don't care if it's Birmingham, Alabama, or any place, we've gotten to the point in the new normal where the cops have to not only be allowed, but they have to start thinking about this. Don't wait, don't ask, don't look for a second here. You get somebody like this who's a, a, a wing nut, a chance, you gotta take them down right away. Yeah, this is uh, the, the really tricky part of police work today, particularly in America, where we have a, uh, a, a police population that has been vigorously, aggressively, violently criticized and challenged over the last year and a half for actions that they take. And we want them, and there's this growing expectation that the cops are right every time. There's going to be these incidents where the, the police are making their best decision in the very moments that it has to be made and what we want here is perfection where we're going to second guess them. I'm not. I don't think you are either and certainly I don't think Tom will either but we have a segment of America that is ready and willing to, to criticize those cops for making a judgment call in the moment of a threat. Tom, is that what we have to learn? Let's bring this forward. A couple of minutes that we have left here. What we learned from Charlie Hebdo a year ago, what we're still learning at this point. We have to learn that the cop on the beat, the guy, the gal who is there holding the weapon, these are the ones who are many times that last line of defense from something brutal happen. We have to let them do their job and we've got to stop being politically correct, yes? You're both right, Ron is absolutely right. The cop on the beat and the cop who's responding to the call is the first and last line of defense. And we have to stand by them at all costs. Unless a cop makes a conscious decision to commit a crime and therefore we'll all be there saying he should be charged or she should be charged, we have to stand by the cops. And if a cop makes a mistake on the street and, and happens to kill someone, we have to be ready and there to support them them in their effort to, to keep us all safe. And we understand mistakes are made, and we feel terrible when those mistakes were made. But unfortunately, Tom, haven't we been shoveled into this situation, this, news, this new normal by ISIS, by Al-Qaeda, by these people? We don't want to do this, but we have to do it. We've got to face the facts. We've also been shuffled into this by the domestic outcry, as Ron referred to, of that the cops are wrong. Let's kill the cops. We have cops protecting demonstrators in New York City who are saying, what do we want? 
dead cops. When do we want them now? And who's protecting them? The New York City Police Department is marching alongside protecting them and their First Amendment right. Ron, I got about 30 seconds left then. From a Homeland Security perspective, from that FBI perspective, what have we failed to learn in the last year? What are we still behind on? Well, I think we're, we're behind on the big uh, intelligence piece because of encryption. I think that is a, a very, very concerning driver today. Jim Comey, the director of the FBI, has talked about it over and over, where the FBI, the intelligence community, police across America are progressively going dark on the threat because of encrypted communications, end-to-end -end encryption between bad guy and recruit. It's a very dangerous world we're in. 35,000 some reported uh, foreign fighters in the Middle East right now from 100 countries. Some of those are going to come back home and do harm. It is not hyperbolic, people. This is the new normal, and we have to change the way that we live, but we have to do it smart. Tom Ruskin, Ron Hosko, gentlemen, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. One man who fears not his useless lawmaker colleagues when it comes to wasting your money, Arizona Senator John McCain. Next.